Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. I want to talk to you guys about some interesting benchmarks which have emerged for AMD's Granite Ridge range of processors, specifically an engineering sample Ryzen 9 9950X, which an Anantec forum member by the name of Igor Kavanaski, hopefully that's pronounced correctly, has managed to snag. Now, it is worth noting that this is an engineering sample chip. So, of course, there possibly is going to be some differences in what the final silicon is capable of ie is probably going to be clocking faster plus also the bios revisions at this point aren't exactly going to be indicative of final performance either so you can probably expect that the retail chimps specifically you know a month or two after release especially probably still have a little bit of gas left in them with that said uh, Igor has actually been testing these chips across multiple different PPTs, 230 watts, 160, 120, 90, and also 60. And um, he's been testing them in a variety of different benchmarks and scenarios. But we're going to focus on Blender because, my goodness, these chips are what I would call rapid. In a nutshell, we are looking at a chip which is almost 30% faster than the 7950X, and as for Intel's 14900K, well, it spanks it. It's actually 34% faster. I want to give courtesy credit here to WCCF Tech, because they've done a pretty nice job of putting all of these things together in a... Um, nice set of graphs and these are basically samples per minute and there are three different uh, benchmarks which have been run here monster junk shop and classroom and you could say that amd are putting on a classroom here for performance especially at lower power levels because well this basically is going to be a very flexible chip now obviously if you're running an aio cooler which is what uh, amd recommends especially if you're going to be cranking the chip so high then you certainly can do so but if you decide hey you know what i want to build like a nice small form factor system i don't necessarily need to squeeze the juice completely out of this orange i'm happy to go with like a you know kind of lower level like 120 or what have you then you've also got that flexibility Anyway, enough uh, talking about random stuff. Let's get onto the benchmarks. Um, focusing on Monster for a second, we're looking at, I'm going to round up and down the numbers here for everyone's sanity, 350 if you're running at 230 watts. Meanwhile, cranking things down to 160, it's 320. So obviously you are losing something here, but if we compare that versus the 7950X, so 230 versus 230, 353, I'll be exact here just for clarity, and 295 for the 7950X. 9950X again at 230 watts per piece. I'm also going to mention a result that HXL on Twitter has managed to discover, and this is on the Geekbench benchmark. Um, it is worth noting, of course, that Geekbench is going to differ in performance levels across different um, revisions. Obviously, you've got a Geekbench uh, 6.3, 6.2, and so on, and different chips also will respond a little bit differently on different benchmarks. But nevertheless, this one's quite interesting because the 9900X here is running at 5.6 gigahertz, assuming it's being detected correctly, but the DDR5 memory is running at a blistering 8,000 MTS. It is going to be super intriguing to see how well um, these chips actually scale in terms of performance, I mean, versus the uh, speed of the memory. There are a lot of uh, theories as well as reports online that they are very I.O. dependent and also memory bandwidth dependent, but it's also going to be interesting to see how latencies also affect things as well. I've heard that uh, memory speed in particular does improve performance, but at the end of the day, A, is that true? B, is it because it's an engineering sample? And C, again, the software, as in like the BIOS versions and so on, aren't exactly final at this stage. Nevertheless, Less, we are getting ever so close to the single core score. Uh, I always feel like I'm hear ye, hear ye, ringing a bell or something like that. But we're getting very close to 3,500 points here for the single core, and the multi core is 22,000. And I'll quickly finish the video, um, well, at least the AMD part of the video, because I also want to speak just briefly about Intel's Arrow Lake release dates. But um, speaking about CPU Z, um, CPU-Z is another application which tends to do quite well with Intel. 
Again, obviously different benchmarks, just to sound like a broken record for a second. Different benchmarks are going to push chips in different ways. Quite frankly, the Zen results are all over the place. In some results, you're seeing Zen 5 do very well, in other ones not so well. Obviously, AVX 512 is a thing. They've also made some big changes to the integer performance as well. The front end for Zen 5 has also been quite radically changed. There's like a dual split front end. Um, basically, the whole thing is just really different. It's going to be very interesting to see how uh, performance actually improves over time, different um, BIOS revisions and so on. Either way, um, just to get back to my point here, the um, 7950X in terms of multi-thread is probably going to score roughly just under 16,000 points. And something like the 13900K is going to be about 17,000 points. And obviously the 14900K is going to be a little higher. But uh, HXL has managed to uh, find a 9900X, um, which is actually showing very impressive results, as you can see on the screenshot here, for um, both a single and multi-core results. And now I just want to talk about the Arrow Lake um, release date. I'm going to keep this super brief, guys. It's going to be like a, a very quick thing um, because there has been some reporting online that Intel are not going to be launching uh, Arrow Lake. And just for clarification here, I mean the highest end versions, for example, 8 plus 16 uh, until some point in December. But this does not seem to be the case. Uh, basically, it is not going to be in December. Um, Jakin on Twitter has also been stating that no, it is definitely going to be October. All of the people I've spoken to have also said um, it's going to be October. Unless something very recent has changed, it is still going to be October. Again, I would say that at this point, I would probably suggest just waiting for... Uh, all of the variants of the different processors to launch. So by which I mean Zen, Zen X3D, as well as whatever you want from the Arrow Lake lineup. So you've got a better understanding of what's coming um, in terms of, you know, the pricing, the motherboard situation, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, yeah, I just want to kind of give you that update because there have been a lot of uh, websites sort of reporting December, not for no reason. There were some leaks that saying it was December, but I just want to give you this update that no, it is definitely October unless Intel decide to delay things again. With that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Uh, apologies for not being on camera for this one, but I just didn't really think there was a much of a point because essentially most of the video is me just showing stuff on screen. So, you know, I'm not really kind of on the camera. Anyway, with that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.